Okay, this is uh, this is really, really a heartbreaking uh, story. It's it's just you know it's absolutely it's sickening on one end. But and again, you look at the you have three little kids involved here. You know, you have a ten-year-old, five-year-old, and a two-year-old who don't have their mother anymore. Over what? You know, when you really get down to it, over what? Uh, last night at around 6:15, we received a call for a stabbing. Uh, we arrived in Deltona at the address. Uh, we're met by a neighbor who informs us that the 10 year old son uh, said that, you know, mom and dad were having a fight, and his stepdad and his mom were having a fight in the bedroom, and he had stabbed her. Uh, the neighbor goes in the house and sees the victim and the suspect on the floor of the bedroom. Uh, two other kids are in the house at the time the five year old and the two year old. Deputies arrive on the scene. Uh, the female uh, was pronounced deceased at the scene. The male uh, was in grave condition and with a uh, slice wounds to his neck. He was transported to CFR where he subsequently succumbed to his wounds. Uh, the investigation bared out that there was a fight over disciplining of the, of the middle child. Uh, at that point in time, our suspect, uh, Oscar Salazar, uh, began stabbing his wife multiple times and she obviously uh, succumbed to her wounds. What is uh, a, a side note to this is our victim is a resident alien here from Mexico. The uh, father of her two children and her husband of the two younger children is here under auspice, different auspices. Uh, the name that is on all of his identification is not the name that matches the birth certificates of two of the children. Detectives were able to ascertain that years ago, uh, the, the name that he uses, Alberto Garcia, had his car stolen in Texas along with his identification. Our suspect in this case has all kind of ID with that guy's name on it, but his real name is uh, Oscar Mer Mercado Salazar. So he's been here, we know, since at least 2016, because in June and July of 2016 he was arrested in Orlando for domestic abuse. One of the cases was battery on a pregnant woman. And then they moved here to Deltona probably uh, five months ago, probably around May, they moved in here. So, uh, you know, again, our hearts, all of our hearts, last night I was contacted by the, uh, the chair of uh, Volusia County Schools to help, wants us to marry together and get as much resources as we can uh, to these children because again, they, they don't have a mom. And, uh, and for the 10 year old to have witnessed that, I can't imagine what the rest of their lives are gonna be like. So, you guys have any questions? Can you, can you just clear up a little bit that the, the two men involved, the, the stepdad and the actual real father, and those two identifications? Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me say, the, the, the 10-year-old's dad is her first husband, okay? So then she meets this Albercito Garcia, who she marries and has two kids with, okay? What we find out is Alberto Garcia, that's identity theft. If the real Alberto Garcia had his car stolen, or Garza, sorry, had his car stolen years ago in Texas. So when detectives reach out to next to kin, that's what they do. They get in a driver's license, they get the information, they get the guy on the phone, he goes, what are you talking about? My brother, he just left my house an hour ago. So then as they do some more searching, they, they stumble across the birth certificates of the two younger kids, and they have the name Oscar Mercedo Salazar on there. So what we learn to discover through the investigation is somewhere along the line, Oscar Salazar came into the country illegally and, and got his, this guy's identification cloned. Somehow, some way, using identity theft, this guy assumed Alberto Garza's identity and has been living in the United States under that name. So when he was arrested and fingerprinted in Orlando in 2016, there would be no record that he was in here. They would be his fingerprints now because the, the, real, the original Alberto Garza has never been arrested before. So he would never have his fingerprints on file. So the husband number two assumed the identity of husband number one. No, husband, husband number husband two husband. and husband number one have no connection okay. to one another. Okay. This, this Alberto, Alberto, Alberto Cio Garza is, got his car stolen years ago in Texas, and in his car was his identification in his wallet. Somewhere along the line, our suspect, our defendant in this case, assumes his identity, and that's how he has all the, a, driver's, a Florida driver's license, everything, 
but the children's birth certificate is in his real name. That that how he was what's what he was in Mexico before he came here. I know it's it's convoluted. Everybody's Mexican involved. Hey Sheriff, um, how long have have this uh, couple been together? I mean, you said he was arrested for battering a pregnant woman in Orlando. Are we talking about the same victim? Same victim. She was a victim in twenty in June and July of twenty sixteen. She was a victim of two different domestic violence cases. He's the, he's the batterer, she's the victim. In one of the cases, she was pregnant. Uh, I think the July case, she was pregnant because she was charged with ag aggravated battery on a pregnant woman. Sheriff, have you ever been called to the home prior to? <clears throat> we, we've, we've never been there. However, some of the neighbors do describe to detectives that there was a contentious relationship. There was a lot of screaming and hollering uh, that would occur there. Nothing, nothing. And the children at this point, are there relatives or that, that kind the of The oldest child is with his dad. The two younger ones are with uh, our victims, the grandma, victims, the victim's mother. Yes, yeah. There's all, there's all, they, they, are, they have a huge family contingency down in Orlando, both the victim and the, the defendant in this case. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's domestic, it's classic domestic violence. I mean, when you look at it, that's sad part of how these things end. I mean, there's a history there. You know, in 2016, he's arrested twice, including battery, aggravated battery on her when she was pregnant. You know, and you listen to the neighbors talk about a contentious relationship and hear, you know, how senseless and brutal this is. Uh, disciplining a child, an argument over disciplining a child le leads to a mother of three being stabbed to death, and then and then the father uh, of two of them taking his taking his own life over. Sheriff, when you talk this. about disciplining the child, uh, who was trying to discipline the child? You guys the stepfather or the or, the, or the, the the defendant was trying to discipline one of the children in there, like the middle child, and then and mom disagreed with that, and that's when the argument ensued. And the and, and during the argument, he pulled out a knife and began to stab her. We'll learn a little bit more on how much more we're going to learn, but this afternoon at 3 o'clock, the children will be CPT forensically interviewed about what had occurred, so we'll get more, but that's, what, that's the gist of what occurred. Do you think the little ones uh, were also witnesses to any of the crimes? We'll find that out. We'll find that out. You know, we, we, we spoke with the 10-year-old, we spoke with the neighbors. You know, we're, we're, we know what happened. It's just a matter of what the little ones heard or saw and what, and what help they're going to need. You know, when, when you think of it, what, what tragedy can you go through other than to watch your mother get killed at the hands of your father or stepfather? Can you share the ages of the two younger ones? They're the 10, 5, and 2. And you talked so about, oh, sorry. sorry, the 10 is with the father and the other two? Or with the grandmother, right. with our victim's mom. Yeah, we got to figure out exactly. I don't know the wherewithal of the grandmother. I mean, let's face it. For those of us who are grandparents, how many of us are prepared to take care of a five-year-old and a two-year-old in the long term? In the long term, uh, I'm sure Dad uh, of the ten-year-old is, you know, relatively a young a young person who's got a job and could probably take you know assume that responsibility. And then again, what happens to the to the nuclear family itself? You know, you have three three kids that are being raised together, and now they're, they're going to be scattered to the wind. What happens to them? You know, and that's that's the concern, and that's not a concern. That that's nothing I could address. The school board could address. Anybody else could address. That's a family issue of how how do you best proceed uh, with what's going to happen to them? And that's that's you know the underlying tragedy is who has any sympathy for for what the father did? None. You know, it's the mom and the children that you have to worry about, and who how does that work now? And I, I don't have. I don't think any of us have that answer other than to say, you know, we as a community will stand behind the families and, and let us know what you need to get these children where they need to be, if you can ever get them where they need to be. What's, what's Chris Salazar's age, Sheriff? Uh, he was born in 1990. Uh, Are you releasing the victim's name at this point? Uh, are we good to release? The victim's name on this? Oh, we're good? You're, you're going to make me draw a blank here on this. 
it's going to be, I'm not even going to attempt to, to do it. Come on, I'll, I'll put you to work. Bianca Yasbek Cruz Tobar. So it's Bianca Yasbek Cruz Tobar. We'll have, we'll have that out. She, and she was born in 1996. As a matter of fact, I mean, I have here, she's a beautiful woman. That's her. And that's a suspect, or the deceased. Will those pictures be released in email to the yeah. agents? I do want to thank the neighbors uh, for getting involved and being such a great help. And I do also want to thank my detectives. I know it's not like uh, a real hard case as far as so much investiga investigation has to go into it, but the simple fact of it was extremely brutal and you do have children involved. And that's never easy on anybody that's a parent or grandparent to realize the ramifications that this crime carries to these three young people. Just, just a quick clarification here. Mm -hmm. uh, the call that came in, that was a neighbor who made that call after the 10-year-old. Correct. The 10-year-old runs to the neighbor screaming for help that his stepdad is stabbing his mom. Mm -hmm. Those folks call 911, they get the response moving, and then those neighbors go into the house and, and see what they see. They see that gruesome scene in the bedroom. Uh, and it's clear uh, from the, the detectives on scene and the autopsy that it was a fight. It was a, she, she was loaded with defensive wounds. So it was a, an absolute fight for her life. And then I'm sure he knew what he did and then he, you know, he slit his throat is what he did. Were there any other weapons found in the house? No, the only thing uh, in there was, uh, was the folding knife that was laying next to him. And you know, if you, I think if you look at us, if you look at Volusia County in 2022, you know, we just had a, a homicide where the husband killed the wife. I mean, that was, that, was, that was not that long ago. That was September 19th, I think, September 18th. And here we are almost a month later, and we have another domestic, uh, domestic homicide. You've always said you said They're, they're dangerous for us. You know, you, 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 you look at what just happened in, uh, in Connecticut. I, I believe that was a fake ruse, some type of domestic violence call to lure officers there. You know, uh, you know in, in, in these domestic situations, there's almost always some type of a weapon involved in that. Um, you know, uh, who knows what was going through his mind this, our suspect in this case, why he took his own life. Did he take his own life because he knew he killed her? Or did he take his own life because he knew what was about to happen? That, you know, the truth would surface of who he was. And what, I, I don't know why they do that, but they're extremely dangerous situations for the woman who's involved in most cases and for law enforcement. And most women don't flee as we see in this case. I mean, you know, two domestic abuse arrests in 2016, pregnant and opts to, to stay and then have another child after We don't, we, don't, we don't know all that yet. I could just tell you conclusively from the police reports that they've been together since 2016. And they've, they've had two children since 2016. So Oscar Salazar is here illegally as well, Sheriff Oscar Salazar, I, 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 this is kind of hard, I probably could do it with a road map. Oscar Salazar, okay, he comes to America. We don't know when, doesn't know how he, he gets across the border. Sometime when he gets across the border, he gets a fake, gets fake ID under the name of Albercito Garza. Mr. Garza is a resident of Texas. He was a victim of a crime years and years and years ago where his car and his identity were stolen. So what you can assume from that is that it's probably, this is what goes on in Texas, is there's a ring or a group of rings that steal identity and then when you come across the border, you have somebody's cloned identity. And unless you get arrested or something like in this case, Mr. Garza 
doesn't know anything about this till we call, assuming that the suspect in, in this case is Alberto Cio Garza. He's not. And then as the detectives begin to search the house, they come across the birth certificate for the two younger kids, and the name on that birth certificate is Oscar Mercedo Salazar, born in 1990. And then also at the crime scene, Oscar Salazar's father shows up and identifies him as Oscar Salazar. There's something that's scratching my head over. You said Alberto Garza in Texas is the father of the 10 year old. Never said that. Oh, okay. Never said that. Okay. News 13 has you confused. I was confused by that too. Because there is another gentleman, separate person. Her first husband is the father of the 10 year old. He's got nothing to do with anything here other than he has custody of the 10 year old. And we're not going to say anything about him because, you know, he's a victim of a crime. His son's a victim of a crime. So we're keeping him. He has right. nothing to do with it. He has nothing to do with that. Since they moved to Volusia, you were ever called for to a Never. Checkup? Never. We've never been to the house. There are no 911 calls. There's no nothing to have ever brought law enforcement to the house. She's a, she's here, she's a resident alien. She's here, she's here legally. 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 Legal. She's a resident alien. She has done everything that you need to do. With her extended family in Orlando and Oscar's. It got family in Orlando as well.